Hi, everyone. Welcome to Stamp It Your Way. Yay! Don't you just love this night? It's like my favorite night just to get together and stamp with you, right? Yeah, it's a blast. It's, it's a, a blast. blast. Yeah. It's always fun. It's a little stressful getting us here. We're a little <laughs> like pull hair out and get a little stressed till we get here. But once we're here, we're good. Um, I, don't know what you talk, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> stress? Forget it. Don't I have any hair left. <laughs> <laughs> For anybody that doesn't know us, I'm Betsy Kreider with Be Creative Stamping. My co-host here this evening is Mary Ellen Stites with Create with ME. Uh, we are um, always excited to be with you and stamp with you, and we're glad that you're with us. And we hope that you're loving the Stamp It Your Way classes. Remember to please, please, please subscribe. That helps us know on that YouTube video, make sure you hit subscribe so that we know that we, you're getting these notifications when we are premiering our videos and um, sharing all of our stamping, our amazing stamping talents with you. So you wanna make sure you're here, right? Uh, yes. <laughs> Confidence, Mary Ellen, confidence, yes. No, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to show, we were talking earlier about shirts, so I wanted to show you mine. This is one that demonstrators can now get, this Inspire Create Share Stampin' Up t-shirt. Um, showing off my love for my Stampin' Up, and um, I don't know if it's just demonstrators that can get this, do you know? I don't remember. Um, I think... I think it's available to anybody because that's our 35th anniversary shirt. Because it is 35th. Yeah. 35 years. So yep. that's right. That's right. So I believe this is branded, branded, branded merchandise. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Absolutely. I've got liquid. I've got, I'm just going with the theme here. The le I'm going with the lemon lime twist. There you are. Hey. One of my favorite colors. <laughs> I've just actually go was, the, just going with the theme. Just going with the theme. You got to be all, like the necklace and everything. Yes. It's like, how do I, I wear a crummy? I hear not a crummy. I wear a t shirt. She's all dressed up with bling and everything. It's like, whatever. I got this t shirt at Walmart. So just be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> it's the necklace. It just dresses it up. It's just dressy. Yeah. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> Well, we want to, we are talking about the lemon lime twist. Lemon lime twist is one of the returning colors. Um, returning colors. It was an old in color that is back. The new catalog is out. Um, everybody is loving it. If anybody out there does not have the new catalog and you are interested in it, please reach out to me or Mary Ellen, and we would love to mail you one or ship you one or get one to you. Um, just uh, reach out to us. But lemon lime twist, the blends that she's talking about here. These, this was one of the free items that you got this month uh, that was included with your kits um, was a set of the Lemon Lime Twist blends. Blends are absolutely the best thing to color with. So uh, we gotta love that. Do you want me to, how about I switched over to my desktop and we take a look at what we're playing with tonight. Do you wanna do that? Yeah, that sounds great. Excellent, okay. All right, everyone. So we are showing tonight um, the class this month, uh, our kit, our Stamp It Your Way kit. This month is your Zany Zoo. And I just love these little guys. Oh my gosh, they're the cutest, right? Do you have a favorite character? I can totally not stop using them. So the more I play with the paper, which even has more characters, little critters, as you yeah. like to say, I just, <laughs> I'm falling more and more in love with them. I just, you know, I, know. I didn't think I would, but I absolutely love them. So I don't know what my favorite is. I don't know that the hippo that I'm going to use a little bit later, that one's pretty darn cute. That one's really cute. That one's really cute. Yeah, I'm going to show you here the paper she's talking about here in a second. There is a die set that goes with this, which is really nice. I love the fact that you can do, and the designer series paper really steals the show here um, because it has all of these different kinds of scenes, depending on what your critters, that's what I like to call them, the little critters are doing. Um, but I love the fact that there are trees in here and balloons, there are clouds, flowers, there's all these different things. Um, Mary Ellen's going to show you a really cool idea here with these uh, curtains. So there's a lot that goes into it. And that's where this paper really kind of shines, right? So here's one of them. Oh my gosh, the fox, I would have to say the fox is probably my favorite on this one. 
I just oh. love that little fox. That's pretty cute. But look at that anteater. Come on. I know, right? See, that little fox is just too cool for too cool for school. Cool. Yes. <laughs> too cool for school. Uh, and then this one there. So this one's like, they're all traveling. This one's like motor, you know, they're all doing the motor thing. And then this one is like the birthday party one, right? They're all headed off to a birthday party. The elephant, the little raccoon, the little dog, right? Armadillo. Is that an armadillo or an armadillo? How do you say that? Dillo. I think Dillo. Dillo. Yeah, Dillo. there you go. I was wrong on both. Yeah. That's what I like about the paper is each one's like a different, like there's an outdoor and a and a yep. hobby paper and a, a moving, you know, moving paper with the bike and stuff and, and then exactly. music, music. So it's cute. This is going to be us in a week. In a week, this is going to be us and we are going to be chilling because we are headed off into the Stampin' Up! incentive trip and we both need a vacation. <laughs> yes, they're actually watching this and we're already gone, right? Yes, exactly. We are already gone. Yes. Yes, we need to with vacation, baby. Um, <laughs> all right. And then so there's this one with the art and the cooking and all that. Then there's the dancing one. That's the one where you were talking about the hippo, right? Yeah, I'm Super using that cute. a lot. So cute. I that mean, and so then well, oh, there's a moose or a deer or something, and that one's cute too. Yeah, and then here is the music one with the little turtle and the little frog playing the flute. And the little beaver with the bongos. So cute. Right? And then I think the last one is the outdoor one, right? If I can get it to get it come out of my packet. Ah, there it goes. There's a skunk and a pig. Yep. Yeah. There's that. There's the outdoor one with um little he's catching butterflies. Isn't it cute? Yeah, it's so cute. All right. So one of the things that we wanted to let you know, and I'm going to feature this one here real quick, uh, quickly, because this is the one that I'm going to show you on the card that I'm doing first. When you get your paper, um, you're, we've included a half a pack of paper in your kit, and it's cut at 12 by 6, right? So we're going to cut this right down the middle. So you might not get um, like multiples of whatever character we're using, but there are so many characters in here that you can kind of pick and choose, right, Marianne? You can kind of pick and make it your own. Yes, for sure. There's so yeah. many. I yeah. don't think anyone's going to have a problem finding a cute character to put on their cards. No, I problem. think so. Exactly. I don't think so either. So you get a half a pack of this designer paper. You get a, um, a pack of the blends. And we've also included a half pack of the classic matte dots. These matte dots are great. You get white, vanilla, uh, a gray, and a black. Um, and I'm going to show you a trick on making those a color that you want them to be. Okay. So that's what comes in your packet. Are we ready to do some stamping? Let's do it. All right. Let me get the, rid of that. Okay. So the first card is, that we're going to do tonight is this little guy. He is so cute. He's like cruising right along there, coming out for the birthday party. Uh, so like I said, you can change this out. You don't have to use the alligator. You could do something different. So for this one, you're going to need, oh, by the way, let's talk about this quickly. If you don't like the color, guess what? You don't have to, right? Yeah. This designer series paper is doing it for you. So the dies are going to cut out that little critter for you. And some of these have dies and some don't. Like the little bunny doesn't have a die, but you can easily just fussy cut that. Um, but some of these have dies and you don't have to color at all because the designer series paper is already done for you. So you have to decide what you like. Do you like the color or do you like the fussy cut? Right, right. <laughs> And if you like a little bit of both, like you can color in the bunny if you wanted yeah. to. So you can make the bunny a different color, but you don't have to. It's just got a little spotlight of color. So that's the nice thing about it. So you're going to die cut um, an alligator from your designer series paper, or you can stamp it because there is a stamp in the set of the alligator that you can then stamp that on a piece of paper and cut that out. What I did with mine is I did cut that out of my designer series paper right there. A crocodile. 
No, I'm just kidding. Is that, I don't know. No, I I'm thought just, about no. that when I I'm said it. I was joking. like, mm, is that a crocodile or is it an alligator? <laughs> I'm just joking. I, I just help. like the fact that I've made him a boy with a basket full of flowers on his bike. <laughs> so he's sticking the flowers. That could be a Mother's Day card. He's sticking the flowers to his mom. He is. To me, he's a little boy. I don't know why, but to me, he's a boy. <laughs> I think we went through that with the playing in the rain too. Boy, girl. <laughs> boy, girl, right? My critters tend to be boys. I don't know why. Um, okay, so what I have, look, you're making me drop stuff on the floor. Oh, let me lean down. Okay, so what I have here is I do have an alligator crocodile cut out with the dies. He's ready to go. But what you want to do also is you want to take for your designer series paper on the back. The other thing about the DSP is that all the backs are black and white patterns. That's my you favorite can, thing. I love that. I love right? black and white paper. You can make it so much your own of what you want to do. Now, what I did was I picked four patterns and I then cut out these strips that you're going to do this for your packet. You're going to cut out these strips, which are one by three inch. So you want to pick out two blacks, two whites primarily. You can pick out anything that you like, but you need four strips of three by one, or one by three inch so that Would you can you create this little fun background. Would you recommend that they cut out their critters that they want for their cards first and then use the scrap for that? Probably. That's a really good idea because you know you always have along the edge, right? So right. even if you know, and I'm going to show you a trick here with the edge here in a second, but you know how like if you go along the edge, you don't have anything here. Like all I'm getting is the tail half or something like that. So definitely try to, like she said, pick and choose like along the top I might want to cut off like the half inch but if it's going to cut into one of your alligators you might want to cut that first right good tip good good tip okay you also have in your packet a piece of the new pebbled path which is one of the new in colors one of my favorite in colors because everybody knows I love a gray a black a brown or a neutral that's so, my you know, favorite too believe it or not it's definitely it, my favorite in it is so pretty it's like a brownie gray kind of thing yeah i love it right mm -hmm. um so you have your cardstock you have a uh, there's a piece of um that for that's going to be where our greening is going to go this card's going to go together really fast i am using pebbled path ink for this a little bit of ink um and i also used a little bit of the blends and here's what i did was i just thought he needed a little bit to kind of blend him in so I thought I wanted to color in his tires. It's not a big deal. Do you need to do it? Probably not. But I just felt like his little tires needed to have some color as well. Well, sometimes so you, it's all about the details. Correct, right? And I wanted to kind of match. I wanted to kind of match. And I just colored out of the lines, which is what happens whenever you're on camera. But the nice thing is, is I can use a little color lifter for anybody that doesn't use this on a regular basis. Remember that your color lifter is your friend. So if you color out of the lines, just use your color lifter to kind of push that ink back in there. And you can see that it does that. It just kind of pushes it right back where it needs to go. There we go. Perfect. All right. So I'm going to fold my card base. Am I close enough for everybody to see or do you feel like I need to zoom in a little bit? Um, I thought about having you zoom in because I couldn't see your little alligator, but actually it's not too bad. I don't know That's how hard good. it would be for you to do it. So I don't think it'd be too hard. Just give me one second. We're on the fly here. So let me see if I can just zoom in. I'm either going to massively zoom in or it won't zoom in enough. How's that? Is that a little better? Yeah, that's good. How about that? That's a little better. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to arrange my designer series paper on the front. There's no right way or wrong way to do this. You're just kind of creating a background. So I kind of get an idea of where I want them to be. And then I start to just adhere. And again, I like to use that liquid glue because the liquid glue gives me just that little bit of extra time to kind of play and Scooch them around where I want them to go. There's no right way or wrong way to do this. Nice and easy, right? Don't overthink it. Don't overthink it. I'm <laughs> the master overthinker, right? Kind of get an idea of where your sides are. Boom, done, easy. All right, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna stamp the greeting. And I did use um, happy birthday to you on this one. 
but you could change it out to one of the other greetings. You're too wonderful or something like that. And I always stamp on my scrap paper first just to make sure. And then I'm gonna go about right there. Happy birthday to you. Easy, right? You. And then what I wanna do is this is gonna get popped up with some dimensionals. And I wanna put this on the front. I'm gonna have that going right across like that. Now what I wanna do is I wanna put my alligator on there so that he's riding right along to bring those wishes to you. And I did pop him up as well. Now he really only needs like right here in the body because that's about the area that's hitting this paper. So I'm gonna put him, that looks good. How's that look? Does that look good? So cute, so cute. All right. Now, what I wanna do with my, um, with my classic dots is I have a couple extra like miscellaneous pieces here. So I'm gonna use this one, but I'm gonna open this up just so you can kind of see it a little better um, from the back. You see that, so I'm using the vanilla dots because I had a lot of vanilla ones left over. Um, I'd use the white on another project, but I had these vanillas and I thought, well, I can still color those. So I like to use, when I'm coloring in a gem or a rhinestone or anything like that with the blends, one thing that I do is I try to save my blends that have like a really bad tip. So, cause sometimes this can like ruin your tips a little bit. Uh, so if you have one that is kind of rough, then use that one and save that one for coloring these items. But I also tend to use the dark versus the light cause I want a more vibrant color. So in this case, I'm gonna color one of the larger size and then I'm gonna color two of the smaller ones. And I'm just using my marker to color those in. And I kept waiting a second or two, letting that dry a little bit, and then came back in and added a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more until I got the brightness or the darkness that I wanted those to be. And you cannot okay. do that with your stamp and write markers, right, Betsy? That is correct. So stamp and write markers, let me show this a little bit better. So stamp and write markers, they are a water-based marker. So a water-based marker is just gonna like rub off. It's not really good, it's not a permanent ink, whereas alcohol ink is more permanent. So you can actually color right on these with your blends, but it's the opposite when you're stamping. So let's say that I wanted to, I wanna color him in or have an outline of him. I don't wanna use my blends for that because if I color this, then essentially what I did just did was colored my stamp. It doesn't transfer because it's just permanent. So it's, a, it's going right onto the stamp. So for coloring on a stamp, I wanna use my water base, but when I wanna, or my stamp and write markers, but when I'm coloring on gems or something like this, I wanna use my blends. Does that help? Yes, perfect. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so what I wanna do here is I'm gonna pull off a couple of black ones. It's a little black and a little green always go together. So I'm gonna do, a little black one up here and I'm gonna do one over here. And then I'm gonna come in and pull in my new green ones I just made and make those. And I did it in fives. So I did five, cause they always say that you should do odd numbers, right? It's always better. It's more eye appealing to go in odds than it is in evens. Look how cute and how easy and fast that card came together, right? Maybe. I'll be making a lot of those. It's so easy. Now, the trick here that I wanted to show you is with this designer series paper, what happens is that you do get like a partial critter, right? You only get part of it. You don't get the whole thing. Well, I've got the front of it. So why not cut that out and put that in the inside? Oh my gosh, I love that. Right? So why let him go to waste? Use my die. I don't even have to fussy cut him. Use my die. Cut that out and then use that for your inside. Perfect. Easy, 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 easy. So there is my first card. I didn't die cut another one because you can see how that works. 
So you're just gonna die cut another alligator or what you can do is you can stamp him. And I did stamp him for on the uh, cover of the, I did do that for the envelope. And I didn't color him, he doesn't need any color. I guess I could put some, maybe make his flowers pink or something like that, but you don't have to. It's good just the way it is, right? That's right. Yay, card number one, done. <laughs> All right, so nice and easy. Let me move that out of the way before I stick my hand in it. Okay, card number two. Card number two uh, is using uh, this little raccoon. Okay, so we're gonna use the little raccoon. Um, you do need the raccoon die. Okay, but you're also going to want to have this little flower die. You're going to need that as well. Now, um, as well as this little curtain, this little um, scallop. It's a fun little thin scallop that you need. You need this, this, this. And what I brought in also is we are pre die cutting for you the deckled rectangles. Um, so there's a couple deckled rectangles. Deckle, oh my gosh, say that three times fast. Deckled rectangles. Um, that can be really scary. Watch what I'm saying there. Um, and then I also use the different greeting because remember, this is stamp it your way, right? You make it your way. You don't necessarily have to do what we're doing and we would love to see what you're creating. So on this card, instead of using a greeting from the Zany Zoo, I just felt like he it needed to be like a baby card. So here is, so I'm using the Charming Sentiments for mine. It's uh, So Tiny, So Precious, and then Babies Are a Blessing is the one that I'm using. Um, but you don't have to, and I might show you um, how to do that differently. So let me get this all out of the way here. And you know something, Mary Ellen? I did not pre-die cut a raccoon. I've got one here. Do you want it? Uh, yeah, can you hand that over to me? Because actually, I did. yeah, I did not pre-die cut. Okay, so the card we're doing, the second card we're doing is this little guy. I just think he's so cute, right? Oh my gosh, look how cute he is. I love him. Isn't that cute? And I just thought that was such a cute baby card. So I wanted to show you what you get it with this one. So with this one, you're getting um, your lemon lime twist, matches Mary Ellen's shirt. You're getting your lemon lime twist uh, uh, card base. There's a piece of the new bubble bath, which I keep wanting to call bubble gum, but it's not, it's bubble bath. Bubble bath piece that you're gonna cut, and that's what you're gonna cut with this little scallop, okay? To get this piece for the front, so you'll get that. Um, you'll have pre-cut die for you, pre-die cut for you, uh, the two deckled rectangles. So there's gonna be one, and this is one of my new favorite new colors, is this lemon lolly. Oh my gosh, isn't it beautiful? I love that color. Lemon lolly, bubble bath, and lemon lime twist. Look how those colors all go together. You're also going to have a white deckled. There's a piece of scrap paper for you for doing a greeting. Um, and then I went ahead and also cut out a the raccoon. I went ahead and stamped with the memento ink and went ahead and die cut the uh, raccoon out. And then you have designer series paper. Now your designer series paper, I'm using the floral pattern. And what I did was I cut this and I colored all of these little guys in. See that? So it's coming black and white, but I'm gonna color it in using my bubble bath, my bubble bath blends. So, and I just randomly picked. So I went through with the bubble bath and just randomly picked flowers. I didn't think about it. I just went wherever my little, marker went that's what I colored in and I just kept coloring in these little guys now you don't have to do this you could do it differently then once I got like so many of them done with the bubble bath I went in with the lemon the lemon lolly and I did the same thing how easy is that right mm. Added in some of the, once I got those colored, then I came in with the lemon lime twist and I just colored in the little leaves of what I needed those to be. So I'm not gonna waste all your time doing that. You can kind of see how that works. I went ahead and have one already done. Oh, thank so, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. You were there thinking, oh my gosh, she's gonna sit there and color all those in. No, 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 no. I no, would have no. said it if you'd have kept going. I'd have been like, what? are you doing girl 
<laughs> no, 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 no. I have some moments where I'm smarter and brighter. There aren't many, but I have few. Okay, that one is there. I am going to go ahead and color in this little guy. I'm going to go ahead. I think I use the dark. I'm going to, all right. So I didn't want to color in all of them. I don't know. I, I had played with them to have him like be a gray and all that. I just didn't like it. Um, so I went ahead and colored him in with um, just in the yellow, right? Because I can make him be whatever I want him to be. Yeah, he's cute like that. Right? He just little, boy, I'm really bad at the coloring tonight. Wow, I can't stay in the lines for nothing. <laughs> you know what? We can't see that. It looks beautiful. It looks perfect. <laughs> That's my goal. Zoom the camera out so far that you cannot see my coloring mistakes. <laughs> Okay, let's get this guy to go. All right, so, because you're going to stamp way better than me. You're better at this than I am. All right. And your cards are like super cute. Mine are super easy. Yours are super like wows. Yours are wow cards. All right. So I want to put this behind my decal. So I just add a little bit of glue to the back and then put that down on top of my scallops where I want it to go, determine how much I want to show. And then I'm going to use some dimensionals on the back of that as soon as I figured out where I threw my dimensionals. I threw them somewhere, but now I don't know where they went. Okay. So I guess we're using, I guess we're using different ones. <laughs> Wing it. We're just winging it here. All right. These guys, this goes on the front of my card. It helps if I put this down first. And that's a little long, but you know what? I have scissors to fix that. Actually, it's not too bad. I did okay. I did all right. And then this guy is gonna go right on the front, right there, okay? This is also going to go right here. Uh, and this guy's going to get popped up on top like this. But I want to, I'm going to go ahead and put this white one down right. as well. I love the deckled rectangles. They just add a little bit extra to yeah. that non-perfect cut, right? Now, what I did was I went ahead and I took my flowers. There are two flower dies in there. And I went ahead and I pre-cut a bunch of flowers just so I'd have some to play with. Um, and I cut them in the bubble bath, the lemon lolly, and my lemon lime twist. Now, for this one, you do want to use the larger size flower because it's going to color these. It's going to cover those balloons. So I need one pink, one green. Uh, and two yellows, but you can kind of see the fun little flower confetti that you can get when you die cut those. Okay, put those back in the bag before they go flying everywhere. Mm -hmm. All right, so I wanna put those here and I'm gonna add dimensionals to little mini dimensionals to the backs of these. Don't worry about the hole right now because we're gonna cover that up here in a second. So I don't care about the fact that there's a, little dimensional kind of poking through on the other side. So don't worry about that. We're just gonna add a couple little minis. And I started with the top balloon first. And what I wanna do is I wanna kind of put the flower on there in a way that it just kind of covers up that balloon that you don't even know it's there. You might have to play with it a little bit to get it exactly where you want it. You're just gonna add that to cover up that balloon. And then I came in with the green one next, and I'm just overlapping that a little bit. Again, just kind of play with it. And then I'm gonna do the pink, overlapping those two, just change your pattern on your, on your um, flower a little bit to see if you can cover up as much of that balloon as possible to get that. Look how cute yeah. that is. That is cute. Isn't that cute? So instead of balloons, he's carrying a balloon flowers. And I'm going to put dimensionals on the back of this to pop this up on my card. Put a little one there for good luck. 
And then this is going to go right here. Isn't that cute? And again, super easy, right? Now what I can do is I can use my gems, my little classic um, dots, and I can take the mini classic dots and I can put them like right over top of where those dimensionals are showing. So it, the, the dot's gonna just stick right to the backs of those dimensionals. Just like that. Now we always talk about, you'll hear us talk a lot about like your characters are just kind of floating out in space. Like we wanna make sure we, we anchor them to the page, right? So you can see how he has a little bit of gray underneath him here. I don't know if you can see that very well. There you go. You see how this one like kind of looks like he belongs on the page, whereas this one looks like he's just kind of floating out there, like he's floating in the air with the balloons, right? Yeah. I want to anchor him down a little bit. So I can use like just a soft, uh, the light smoky slate. I'm just adding a little bit of gray underneath them. And remember that if you feel like you get too much, you can always come back with the color lifter and just kind of like disperse it a little bit by going over top of it. And it just kind of lightens it up a little bit and gives it a more, a lighter shade. What do you think, Mary Ellen? Love it. Right? Cute, right? Now with this one, I did use the word so tiny, so precious, babies are a blessing. Um, I did do a ribbon on here. So I just did a loop with my baker's twine, tied that, hold and make it the way you want. I used a little mini glue dot, um, added that down here, like right about where his hand is located. And then added my ribbon or my twine. Trim that up. Cute, 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 cute. Oh, the other thing I did do on this one also, and I, you can still do it. I tend to do this a lot where I add things after the fact because I forget to do it when I'm doing it. I did add a little bit of Wink Estella on him. So I went around like all the white areas and just oh, made him a little on the glossy side, right? So you can just kind of slide. I'm just gonna slide my Baker's twine out of the way here and pretend that I did it earlier before I forgot. Isn't he cute? There. So I just add a little bit of Wink Estella to give him a little bit of blingy look, right? The last thing I did on this, and like I said, you don't have to use the words we're using. You could do this instead. You could use, I actually pulled it out because I thought, well, maybe I'd try this. You could use um, something great to celebrate you, All right? That did not come out very well. So the nice thing is when you have scrap paper, you try again, it's a little better. Uh, and then I can just trim this up. So if I wanna do, I can cut it out. make it how I want. Something great. So I could put the something there and I could put something great here. Um, and I could do the to celebrate something great to celebrate, right? Just like that. That's cute. I love Isn't that. Isn't that cute? Mm -hmm. And then you could just stamp the word, you could mask your stamp and stamp the word you just in the inside then, or use the die cut and just put the die cut, uh, the little cutout piece of you in the inside. So there are so many ways that you could go with this as far as doing your greeting. What I did was I did stamp the little character, but I just stamped the balloons. You can see a little hint of his ears there, but we're just gonna ignore those are there. <laughs> and what I wanted were the balloons. I think I did a little bit better job on the envelope where I just got the balloons. And then I used the same blends that I've been using, the bubble bath, the lemon lolly, and the lemon lime twist to color those in. What do you mm -hmm. think? Love it. 
<laughs> That's my favorite. Right? That is so cute. I just love it. So these were super simple cards. Um, I do have a couple little, Mary Ellen's going to show you her cards next, but I thought just quickly, I would just show you a couple samples. I have gone to a, an event the last couple weekends, and here's a card that we made at that event. And then here is another card. Aren't they cute? And then this was one that I saw. So these are actually similar, but you see how easily you can change out the critters, right? Well, it's got a glare. There you go. Right. Yeah. So easy. So, all right. Uh, you ready, Mary Ellen? We're going to switch it over to you. Okay, so I'm going to show you this really cute little trifold card. And what you're going to get in your um, packet is, Betsy, <laughs> Betsy, I don't know if you realize, but we have to send a whole sheet of, we sent a whole sheet of eight and a half by 11 because there's no other way to do this without sending a whole sheet. I thought you could do, um, uh, less, but um, it, it's not going to work. And, and I'll show you why here in a minute. So the other pieces that you're going to have is a piece of the new lemon lime twist um, ribbon that comes in a combo pack. You're going to have a piece of cardstock. Um, you'll, yours won't be embossed. I have mine embossed already. Uh, this is lemon lime twist, a piece of uh, white, basic white, you'll have a piece of the designer series paper, or you're gonna cut the piece of designer series paper, I'm sorry. And then all the measurements will be in your tutorial. And then you have a, a scratch paper for stamping your um, greeting and your little turtle. So let me show you how this fun um, fold kind of comes together. I'm gonna set those out of the side, out of the way. So you're gonna start by getting a ruler or using your paper, and you're gonna measure down on the left side, three inches, and you're gonna take a pencil for this. Now I would normally use my favorite ruler from my bestie, this one right here, but you can't really see. It. So I chose, <laughs> I use that ruler all the time. Thank you for that. You're gonna measure down three inches and make a little tick mark with your pencil. And then you're gonna come over here and measure up three inches from this side. I'm gonna move my paper up a little bit. Measure up three inches, just like that and make a tick mark just like that. And then you're gonna cut from this tick mark to this tick mark. It's the only, the only way you can do this. I started to think maybe we could cut it in half, but it won't work. Tick mark in the channel, just like that. And then I rotate my paper till my tick mark down here is in the channel. So you're not gonna see it all because I've kind of have it um, wide, but then I'm gonna, I've got it kind of zoomed in, but then I'm gonna cut it and you're gonna get two pieces just like this, okay? So now we're gonna do some scoring and we are gonna score this paper. Um, I gotta make sure I do it right. Okay, so we're gonna score it at four and a quarter right here. And then we're gonna score it at eight inches, okay? So I'm gonna set this one aside. You're going to, you've got your card scored and you're gonna um, fold it like this and then back on itself, just like that. Okay, and you're gonna use your bone folder and make nice crisp edges. Now we're gonna set that aside and bring in our paper pieces and do a little measuring and a little scoring on those. Okay, so let's start with the um, basic white and we are going to make a tick mark with our ruler. We're gonna use our, bring our ruler in again and we're gonna go down um, one inch on the left side with our, this is um, just, just so you know, this paper is uh, five and a quarter by four. So we're gonna go down one inch right here. Okay, and we're gonna bring our cutter in and we're gonna go from the tick mark here to the corner. Okay, so see how I moved that into the corner? Nice. I, I wondered how you did that. I wondered mm -hmm. how you lined that up. So anytime that I've got um, a corner on here, I want to pull my blade down. I never want to pull my blade onto a, a point like that because it's probably going to, um, it's probably going to kind of tear the paper and you don't want to tear your paper. Yeah, it gets all crumply on the end, right? It gets crumply. That's exactly right. <laughs> I don't know if that's a real <laughs> word, but that's the word I use. <laughs> Let's go with that. <laughs> If you're ever wondering like, okay, which side do I have to go down on? You can always set your paper on and go, okay, I need to measure down on my boop 
right side on this one. So on my lemonless lemon lime twist, there you go. <laughs> you said it before, say that fast. Exactly. I'm going to go down three quarters of an inch and make a little tick mark with my pencil. So it was one inch on the white and three quarters of an inch on the lemon lime twist. That's correct. And then again, put your tick mark in the chamber and then your point right here, making sure your cutter is not at the point side. And then you're just going to cut that off. Okay. So that's going to fit in here if I did it Which right. embossing folder did you use by the I way use, on this? I actually used the um, basics folder. It's a three combo set. It's an online exclusive. exclusive. Did not get those. They are, oh my gosh, I want them. And I did not, I, I thought, oh, I don't need those. I don't need those, yeah. but I've seen so many things. I now need them really no, desperately. No, I'm pretty sure that you need them. Yeah, and, I need them. And again, just to just to see, I'm, I know I want to come down on this side. So I'm going to use my um, ruler and I'm going to come down. I got some hair here. That's my hair. Hold on. <laughs> remember that stress. All our hair is falling out because we're stressed. Remember? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to measure down um, five eighths of an inch. So I'm going to just make a little tick mark. I've got black there. So I'm going to go in a little bit. And again, I'm going to cut that from my tick mark. Don't make it harder than it really is. It's not that hard. If you follow the tutorial, it's not that hard. Hopefully everything matches. I think I can put that away for a while. Yeah. And that one goes there and this one will go here. And so we're going to do a little assembly. So I can go ahead and um, adhere the basic white. Uh, it was interesting that you did not tell me I had to include an entire sheet of paper in with my packets. You kind of sprung that one on me here. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, I, I was trying to do it. I was trying to do it. Um, differently. This is totally then, worth it though. This card is so worth it because it's well, you so get cute. Two, you get two out of one. You get two out yep. of one. I don't know if I said this or not, but I, I know we could pre-cut this for them, but I think one of the things is doing it yourself and learning the cut. And then you can take that and you can do it over and over again. Um, Absolutely. So I'm not going to adhere this yet because I'm going to tie the ribbon around it. And I can go ahead and do that now. So we gave you a length of ribbon, about nine inches. I, I probably cut a little bit more than that because I didn't use a ruler. And you're just going to tie it in a knot. There's no bows or anything like that. You want it to be over here on the left side because you're going to put a little tag uh, with your little um, character, your little critter, as Betsy likes to say. I don't know why I call them that, but they are. They're critters. Yeah. Must be a Pennsylvania thing. Maybe it is. Maybe. Okay. So now I can go ahead and adhere it. There's my little hippo. Okay, so that's the front of my card, just like that. So we have included um, the tag. Did I say I had a tag? I had a tag. Oh, I yep. didn't. Yeah. Oh, yes, I did. I just put it back. Okay. So we've got the little tag here. And um, before I um, do anything else, I want to stamp my turtle and I'm going to use Memento ink. I'm going to stamp my little turtle just like that, and I'm going to do some coloring, and then I'll go ahead and um, die cut him out. So I wanted to use the the lemon lime twist, the ones that we gave them um, in their packet. And so I've got a light. Oh, I got the wrong ones. <laughs> I which ones, which ones did you pull? First parakeet party. <laughs> oh, they, they are close. Okay. okay, so I'm going to color my um, bits and pieces of my little turtle with the um, light. So there are little tips and tricks. So that's why I'm going to go ahead and do it on the camera. And um, I'm not too worried about going outside the line like um, Betsy did because I'm going to cut him out. So I want a little dark around his um, snoot. I would know that's going to be dark where his shell comes out, um, where his legs and arms come out of the shell. And then I'm going to go back in and do my blending. So I go light, dark, light. You've heard me say it before. Yep. It's always a good reminder. Yep. Light, dark, light, because it's always good to 
they say it's good to work with like a like where it's already wet right it's always because it blends easier yeah so now i'm going to get i gotta make sure these are the right color i'm gonna get my um light and dark uh in color which is the um wild wheat i like this color this i actually, like it i like it some people yeah. don't like it but i like it yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with all the new ink colors. The new ink colors are like, oh my gosh, they just make me happy. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. They just make me happy. Maybe we're children of the 70s. So you think of them as like a little bit of a 70s type color? Well, the moody mauve reminds me a little bit more of like the 80s, 90s. Cause I remember my husband and I, we bought a house and um, we were coloring, we were painting at the walls um, of our house. And that moody mauve was one of the accent walls in my living room. <laughs> was the is exactly that moody mauve. So that's why it makes me think of like the 90s and yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. I like those more. You're, we are opposites. Mary Ellen is such a bright girl. She's bright and cheery and I'm moody and muddled. <laughs> I'm going to come in with the copper clay now and just finish the last little bit of his shell. His, his, his shell. This is a boy. And then I'm going to finish off with a little bright. I'm going to make this little microphone bubble bath pink. There you go girl I don't know and then we've got to finish off the little um microphone there with a little bit of gray maybe yeah. need to detail it with this dark there okay cute cute very okay. cute it's the details it's all about the details mm -hmm. oh my gosh look how cute I know it's so cute so I'm gonna bring in my um machine here because I've got my little mini I could have die cut that for you but I did not do it so right. well this is a good time to talk about that little mini machine because did you know that customers can get that yes I know you need it it's so yes. pretty. so pretty <laughs> so pretty I love the boho blue now I'm going to try to die cut mine without any um washi tape we'll see what happens i'm not always successful but you'll give me some grace if i'm not oh i think you nailed it i think i nailed it too <laughs> it's my lucky day. okay so i'm gonna set all those pieces aside in there and that's our little turtle and he's gonna be popped up right here on this but there's a couple of things that we're gonna do we're going to first bring back our scrap paper and he's going to be popped up here, but he's got a, he's singing. So he's going to have a couple little notes and I'm just using, I stamped more than I really needed to. I'm going to clean that off. I really just want those two little notes there. And I'm going to move him so I don't stamp his little nose. And I'm going to stamp. There's the two little notes. Okay. So you'll see what I do with that in a little bit. So we're going to pop him up with some dimensionals. And he is doing his little karaoke. I don't, I think, I think he's doing karaoke. That's what I think. I really, <laughs> he's not singing, he's just karaoke. Yep, there you go. I like it. He's a super, uh, that's what he does on the weekend. Is that, there you go. I love it. Okay, so he's doing his little karaoke, and then oh my gosh, where I use the little um dots. So I'm going to use the um two small dots to fill in his song notes there, just Perfect. like that. Isn't that cute? Oh my gosh, I love it. He's so cute. Okay. And then we're going to, we need a little greeting. So we're going to take the little piece here and we're bringing in the Azure Afternoon, which is, I didn't mention, that's the color of this little tag. And this is a tag from the He's All That. And we have that, we already had that all um, die cut for you. And we're going to stamp happy birthday to you and just use our snips to cut that out and add that to our card. 
So I'm going to do that now because I knew if I did that in advance, then I would have little pieces, um, <laughs> never be able to find them. So it doesn't take but a second to, to cut out the words. That's me. Yeah. Right. I'm try to pop my scraps off the camera. So I've got to you, birthday, and happy. And I'm cutting as close as I can to the words. That's all I want to show is just the words. I don't need any extra. Okay. Happy birthday to you. And I'm going to bring my card in. Now I could put glue on the back of these, but I find it's better and easier for me. Let's see if this one's coming out. This one was sitting on my desk. So let's see. Sometimes they seal up a little bit on the end. I'm yeah. going to do it off camera just in case I get. So don't squeeze too hard or all of a sudden you get a big glob. <laughs> let's see if I can just poke it. Oh, I see it's starting to come out. Okay, here there you go. Okay, there it goes. I just want to get this off on some. Okay, so I just like to um, go ahead and put a little like this. Happy birthday to you. So I just put it right on my paper. That's a good idea. Yeah, because then, then you you're not, you're not getting it on your fingers. You're flipping this all over and doesn't, it's like, what? And then the other tip, and I didn't do it, but sometimes it's easier if you work from the to you and then birthday and then happy, and then you're not pulling, you know, your hand into it. So start from the bottom and then just go up. So here's a card. Let's see. Cute. That. What a great idea. And then there's lots of room. You could add some of the musical notes. I tried a couple of different things. Um, and there's all, there's so many cute options that I decided to leave it like this. And then yep. you could add some of the notes up here. You could just put another greeting um, or you could just write a, a fantastic message. So there's card number three. Nice. Okay. And let me just rearrange my desk a minute. Put my dimensionals back so I know where they're at. Oh, uh, trust me, I keep losing mine. They kept popping off everywhere. I still don't know where that other sheet went. <laughs> well, I have to tell you something funny about this next card, Betsy. This is so cute. This is a little bridge card. I love it. Okay. So well, you cute. Can, I show like that. You can see that this little animal here is like floating and I'm going to show you how to do that. So this is a whole scene. So you might think, oh, how are you going to um, put that in a, an envelope? But look it, it folds completely flat. Wow. Thank oh you. Gosh. So cute, so but cute. I'm going to tell you something super funny. So this is um, bubble bath, the bubble bath and pool party. And mm -hmm. um, I did the tutorial and I cut your packages with Coastal Cabana. <laughs> so, hey, it's okay. We're, I think Coastal Cabana and bubble bath will look great together. So um, let's is. go with the flow. But I just want to tell you that you can stamp it your own way, right? So hey. we're going to. Like exactly that. right that's the whole theme of our that's the theme of our existence baby stamp it your own way <laughs> this coastal cabana card stock is eight and a quarter by four and a quarter and we are going to have the long side at the top and we are going to score it we'll make sure we get our cutting blade out of the way we're going to score it at one and three eighths which is right here one and three eighths two and three quarters two and three quarters, five and a half, just follow your tutorial as you're doing it, and then six and seven eighths. Okay, so that's going to make our card as we fold it just like this. Let me get this out. Okay? And for anybody that isn't like didn't sign up for stamp your way, first of all, you should because you're missing out. But if you're just catching us on the video replay, just rewind us and listen to us again. And she'll go right over those, right over those measurements for you again. Yeah. And I'm going to pull out all the other pieces. So we're going to make a couple of changes actually, because um, I realized when um, there, there's <laughs> you, you are a walking mess, girlfriend, oh, a walking I, mess. <laughs> a busy day here it's been a super busy day here in the nest we've been working on um a lot of things so it's just been super busy so originally I, originally I had designed this with the um um bubble bath 
card, uh, ombre cardstock, as you can see, as I piece this together here a little bit, um, from the um, bright and beautiful six by six cardstock, okay, or six by six designer series paper. Um, as I was doing it, I realized that everyone's going to need um, two sheets of six by six paper, and in a pack, you um, only get four sheets. So. Um, looking at this, I hope everyone can agree that just substituting the bubble bath cardstock, which is what you have in your packet, um, works perfectly. But I am going to, I've got it here. So I'm going to use the designer series paper because I pre-cut that. Um, but that is, that is why you don't have the, um, the paper the same. So let's go ahead and get started with our, a little bit of stamping. So I've got a strip of Coastal Cabana that is, uh, let's see, this one is a half inch by five and a half inches. The um, bubble bath cardstock will be five and a half inches by one and a quarter inches. And then you're gonna have a strip of um, basic white that is five eighths of an inch by five and a half inches. So these are all five and a half inches, but this is um, one half, five eighths and one and a quarter. So we're going to do some stamping with the confetti stamp and the greeting. So I'm going to start with my greeting on my, um, oh boy, my pad is super juicy. So I'm going to stamp off there. I'm just, these are brand new pads. So I'm going to uh, make my greeting kind of be off center just a little bit. Um, and then I'm going to just add confetti all around it to make this card super, super festive. There's something to celebrate because you are great. Okay, so I've got that stamp just like that. Am I frozen? Nope, you're good. That looks oh, great. Okay. You, but you were so quiet. I didn't know. I thought, oh, yeah, I froze. And then, I don't really um, feel like I talk too much. <laughs> no, you don't, but I was paranoid. So I didn't do anything. <laughs> then you're going to layer that onto your white. And so it's just going to give a little border. Plus, it gives a little strength to your bridge. And then you're going to just layer, layer, and more layer. And I'm going to go all the way there and add that to my bubble bath cardstock, just like this. So this will be the topper. Now I wanted to mention that because it's stamp it your way, you might want to go ahead and put a scallop on yours and that's perfectly fine. And that would make your curtain, the top of your curtain all scalloped and totally adorable. Um, I did not do that just because I felt like this card had a lot of pieces, but if I was stamping at home um, on my own and was doing this for a special, um, I've got a couple great nieces that would love this, then I might, then I might take the time and do that little scallop for them. So I just wanted to mention that. Um, that, that is so cute. Be. So I'm going to use the bubble bath cardstock right here in the as the background. And then I'm going to set everything aside for just a minute. And I'm going to bring that adorable little boho um, blue machine back in. And I want to show this die right here. So this is a little curtain. So you're just going to cut your... Um, cut out two pieces of the curtain and you'll see how that works just like this. And then you should be able to pop that out and just flip your die over and cut another piece just like so. Okay, so there's your little curtain pieces. Aren't those cute? Those are so cute. So cute. So it's just the little details. Like I said, it's the little, it's just the little details. All right. So I am going. Yeah, I wasn't to... sure how to use them. When I saw them, I thought, well, I don't know what to do with those little curtains. So I'm glad you're showing this because I wouldn't have known what to do with those. Yeah. So look at this as your little curtain, just like that. I'll show you that. But I want to show you how we make the little um, critter float and what you're going to have in your. Um, piece in your um, packet is a little piece of window sheet and it's a half inch. It's really small. So look for it. Hopefully it won't get lost. It's one half inch by three and three quarters. And you're going to score it on each end. And when I say score, I mean, take your scoring blade back and forth, back and forth really hard. And then you're going to have just a, mostly a mark and you're going to have to do a lot of bending because window sheets, you know, they're, they're a lot tougher than cardstock. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and um, 
take your bone folder, uh, go ahead and get you a nice crisp edge on that. And then you're gonna bring in some strong adhesive. And I really recommend a little bit of tear and tape. And I've got a little bit of fuzz on there. So you're gonna use just a tiny, tiny bit, maybe, well, half inch, I guess, cause it's a half inch. So I'm gonna put tear and tape on each of my um, uh, flaps, folds, bends. Flaps, flaps work, flaps, flaps work. Okay, and so I'm going to put well, just like that. Okay, and then I'm going to only take it, take off the cover or the from the tear and tape on one side, and I am going to um, go up about oh three quarters to an inch on the um, side and just adhere it just like that. Then I'm going to fold this flat. And I'm going to take off this other side. Like this. So you're going to fold your card up like this, give it a good burnish. And then you've got your platform for your floating element, which will be one of your critters. Okay. So while I have, I've, I've got all kinds, I want to show you what I've got here. So Isn't that, it's so nice that you can fold this card flat. I love the fact yes. that you've got that in there with that window sheet and it folds flat. So look at all these guys that I cut out. Uh -huh. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. Butterfly. Okay, so I could decide, um, oh, I want to have this little moose or this is gonna be the star of the show or this little lamb's gonna be the star of the show, just like that. Um, I mean, totally. Oh totally. my gosh, look how cute. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna start by putting my um, butterflies. I cut out a couple butterflies. Um, you can have butterflies on yours. You don't have to. And I'm going to put those butterflies on the back before I um, put anything else on my card. Then when you go to do your, let's say you're going to use this guy, because this is what I used on the main card. So I'm going to set that one aside, but I want to show you how I did it. So I took a piece of, it's, you're putting a floating element on here, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a little flimsy. It's a little flimsy because it's designer series paper. So what I did was I adhered it to a little scrap of basic white cardstock to make it a little heavier. Does oh. that okay? Yeah. And then cut it out. So I, oh. I guess I back in. I forgot about that. So well, that's that a brilliant idea. I never would have thought of doing that to add like an extra just little layer behind it. You know why it's so important? I think it's so important for um, when you're going to um, mail this card, okay? Because you know, at the post office, sometimes things get a little dinged around. Sure. This, like you said, it's a little on the flimsy side. It just gives it a little bit more oomph yes. to hold it up. Exactly. So then we're going to cut them and then we'll cut through both, but it gives it a little bit of extra um, strength, okay? So mm -hmm. we'll set it all aside and bring in our card again. And we can adhere that on now. Whoops, pop up that little piece there. Okay. And all I did was take a little bit of, um, you could use probably tear and tape would be the best just because um, that way, if you put it across her little skirt, then it's instant stuck and you're not, when window sheet is slippery, right? So yeah. If you're if you use a window sheet, then you might be with. I mean, if you use a window sheet with liquid adhesive, then you might be um, waiting quite a while. So now I'm going to use use. I'm going to finish my bridge card. I'm going to do the top. So I only want glue. It's going to go from here to here. So I only want glue here, and I'm going to glue it just like that. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and fold. Did I freeze? Nope, you're good. Okay. Then I'm going to go ahead and fold it down. And I'm going to lift that up, put a little glue here, fold it down flat because this is the way it'll be mailed. Did okay. you hear the truck that just went by my house? <laughs> no, not now. I heard it earlier, but I didn't hear one now. 
All right, that's what, so just to let everybody know, this is what happens when you live across the street from an ice cream place. And right now there's currently little league teams over there and they're gonna make oh. every truck honk its horn as it goes by. So my apologies in advance now. <laughs> well, I love it. Well, it's that time of the, it's that time of the year. Time of year, yep. So, and that's as much as I love having ice cream right across the street, there are some drawbacks to it. <laughs> hey, what are you complaining about? You have an ice cream store right across the street. Uh -uh. I know, right? There's good and bad. As my pants keep getting tighter and tighter, there's good and bad. <laughs> uh, okay, so now I just use liquid glue so I could get my curtain on. So now I've got our curtain up and then we can um tile a couple bowls so i did that in advance i just took gave you a length of the uh sweet sorbet uh in color metallic oh, so pretty it's so pretty and so i'm going to tie i just tied a couple bows and whether you do it um oh rabbit ear style or regular um just like you're tying a shoe it doesn't matter it all comes out the same and then add it with a little mini glue dot to as a curtain. These mini glue dots are really stuck as a curtain tie back. That thin, that thin ribbon, it just is so easy to tie sometimes. Some of that thicker ribbon can be a little harder, but this thin ribbon is really nice to work with when it's when you're tying a little bow. It's so soft and yummy and sparkly. Oh my sparkly. God. Sparkly. Sparkly. I think this time I'm going to try to put the little mini glue dot down first. Yeah, that works. And then tie this other little bow. Put it right there. It's a little tie back. Now it's time to decorate um, with whatever critter we want. So I, I love this little hippo. And I always look at what's going to be hanging off. So part of her skirt or hand. And so sometimes I'll just hold my hand like that. And I just can glue. I know that if I glue this, I'm going to be safe putting her on there. She is supporting. She is a, she is the supporting actress in the role. There you go. And then we have to have a little music. So we've got our little frog playing the flute. Uh, he is um, the star of the musicians. He's the accompaniment, right? Isn't that what you say? Accompaniment or something like that? So all these pieces are pieces that you could use um, um, on yours. And then we need to add a little bit of bling. I'm going to say bling. Um, I just put three of the small dots right below the words to draw attention to them. And then I like to put them right in the center of the flower. This would be a place where you could color them. You could mm -hmm. color yellow, lemon lolly. They would be really cute. That'd be cute, right? Yeah, I, I, that's the great thing about those, the lighter color, the, the white and the vanilla. You can make them whatever color you want. So there's our, there's our little bridge card. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. And it was easy to do. I thought it was going to be a lot harder than that. I want to show you, I, I've got an envelope here. I want to show you how it slips right into the envelope. <laughs> if it doesn't slip in the envelope, we're in trouble. No, it slips right in. <laughs> we'll just fake it until you make it, sister. You might have to maneuver your bows a little bit, but it'll go right in there. So, so cute, right? That's very cute. Oh my gosh. It's so adorable. So um, I hope you guys enjoy making this card and I hope you'll um, make other bridge cards because the, and the possibilities um, are endless. That is awesome. That is awesome. So we're coming back to video here. Come back to me. Hi, everybody. Yay. So we, yes, we hope that you liked every, all the cards. So Zany Zoo is um, a fantastic suite. If you did not get this bundle or get the paper, um, make sure you add it to your list, right? For sure. Yeah. Um, Let's talk so, about what we're going to do next month. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. June is, um, I can't believe how it's going to be June already. It's like, wow, where the heck is this going? It's going way too fast. So June is heading, uh, is coming our way. Do you want to show your desktop and show us what we're going to, what it looks like? Let me stop video here. There you go. <gasps> Look at yeah. that. We're going to do the let's go fishing um, suite, which has the gone fishing bundle. Um, the dyes are so adorable. I mean, can you say adorable? When it's kind of masculine, I think you can. 
so. I think so. I think my dad is a fisherman and I say he's adorable. So I think so. Yeah, my husband is one too. So um, yeah. I have to agree with you on that. I think that any of these cards, they would both um, love. I know your dad and I know he would love any of these cards from you. So um, I do want to say though that um, we, since we're talking about, I know this was kind of your thing here, but I'm going to just pop on and say that we have do a it. little bit of a change of schedule. Okay. Should we talk about a little bit of change of schedule on this one? Because you Please might- do. You might be going to call June if you don't get it done till June 10th and the 11th and blah, blah, blah. But um, actually, the um, we're going to try to get this out. I'm going to be still on the trip. I don't get home until June 8th. So we're going to try to get this video done so that it is posted the Wednesday before Father's Day because one of the cards is a beautiful Father's Day card. And we want to make sure that you um, get it done. And we're going to make sure that you get your kit and that you um, can get the cards done for Father's Day. Fingers crossed. That's the goal. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to do our best, but we've got a lot going on. So, yes, fingers crossed. That's the goal. Yeah. Yeah, we do. So, mm -hmm. did you, you want to say, did you want to show anything from that? Or do you want to well, say? Well, I did play with this set a little bit. Like so this is a card that I was playing with. I was playing this last weekend with this suite and um, trying to come up with some different ideas. And I just love this like monotone, boho blue, misty moonlight kind of colors. Um, but I have all the little, what do they call those? Bo bobbles? Bobbles? I am not, my dad fishes. I do not. You've got some, a bobber there and you've got two lures. Lures. There you go. See, I do not know the terminology on this at all. It's going to be terrible for me to do the video on this um, because I don't know the terminology. So you get these cute little guys and cute little things. But I thought, oh, well, that would be cute to like make this little rope. Um, so there's this new twine that's out um, and it comes in all the new ink colors. And I made like this just little rope that's hanging off my card. And it's these little guys are hanging. So it's just a fun fun little card but it kind of gives you an idea of um kind of what this suite looks like and what you can do with it what do you think now that card is not going to be part of the um stamp it your way right it is not it'll just be uh it's just giving you an idea of something that you can use to uh, one, just an idea of using this suite of product but um it's definitely one you're going to want to add to your list um for all the guys and the fishermen in your lives so it's a good one well, you know, you laughed about, you won't know the terminology, but there's a, there's a couple little dies in that set that I wasn't sure about. So I had to go to my fisherman husband and we sat down for a minute and I said, okay, here's the stamp set. Here's the dies. What, what goes with what? And he said, oh, that goes with that. And that's a, this, and that's a, that. And now we'll tell you a little bit more about that next month, but. Excellent. I didn't know either. And I do fish. So, but I wasn't sure of all that. I just tie, tie the thing for me and I can do the rest. But <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so I don't know. No, nope. no, nope, I'm not the, I'm nope. Don't do, I don't do fishing, but uh, my dad is a, a big fan. So I can't wait to send him some, uh, send him a father's day card. Uh, I'm sure he'll enjoy that. So <laughs> So yeah. that'll be June. Um, registration for June opens on June 1st. Um, registration will close on June 10th. That's the goal. And then we'll post the video. What are you thinking? June what? Wednesday before. But if we get it done, we'll try to post it. We'll we'll make sure they know when we send out the tutorials. Yeah. But um, yeah. you know, we're going to try uh, to get it out as soon as possible for everybody. Okay. I mean, our goal would be by Wednesday of that week. I think it was, was it the 14th? I don't have my calendar in front of me, but. I don't um, either. I don't if either. We, if we can do it before then, then we most certainly will. Cause we know how we are. We want to have it, but we got to get the packet to you too first. So. Yeah. yeah. But if you don't make it for Father's Day or you don't have, you know, in some cases, maybe you don't need a Father's Day card. Maybe it's for your brother. Maybe it's for, there is a nice uh, retirement stamp set, retirement set in there there's um it doesn't have to be just for fathers um it's just masculine or anything that has to do with fishing so um for uh your favorite fisher person 
doesn't even have to be a guy. Uh, but you, it, the, the designer series paper is another one of those that is like the, it's the dyes, the designer series paper. It's definitely a set you want to get. So. Yeah. And cool. even, the, even the happy birthday to you that we use tonight could be used on there. So everyone's got birthday, you know, and, and yeah. I think we really struggle sometimes with masculine cards. So I think making a bunch of these is going to be awesome because you'll just have them in your stash and then add the greeting later. I have yeah. lots of people who make their cards and they put no greeting on it and they go, I'm going to wait and see who I have to send this to and personalize it for them. So I think this is a great card for that. That's a great idea. Yeah. Just wait to hold off. Yeah. And don't put the greeting on until you need it. Um, yeah. I, as a matter of fact, I think one of the cards that I'm doing is a congrats card. So it could be for anything. It's just a straight on Kirk congrats. So um, you can make that whatever you need it to be. Retirement, uh, graduations coming up, high school graduation, college graduations are going on right now. So congrats cards are really good. So um yeah, just remember that stamp it your way is about stamping it your way. Just because we do a certain greeting or something like that doesn't mean you have to or a folder or anything. You can make it your own and we'd love to see what you're doing. And if there are any suites or any products in the catalog that you'd like to see us uh, show or um, uh, specialize in for like a month, let us know that too. And, uh, we love your feedback and that helps us to know where we're, where we're shining and what's working and what you love about it. That's right. That's right. Right. So remember to subscribe. Uh, remember to reach out and give us a like and a love. And um, Mary Ellen, was there anything else you needed to add or we think we're good? So you might go um, follow Betsy at Be Creative Stamping or me at Create With Me. And um, you can, while we're away on our trip, we're going on a Norwegian cruise. Um, you can follow our um adventures and uh, know when we're back in business so just want to put that little plug in absolutely fingers crossed for good internet and we'll try to post what we can when we can i am bring you on vacation baby i am ready <laughs> all right everybody have a good night bye bye